Okay, you are live. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our talk, Gamifying the Midterm and Final Review. My name is Jose Diaz. Uh, my email address is jose underscore diaz1 at fitnyc.edu. And I'm here today with Professor Wong. Hi, Jose. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am Lorenza Wong, and I am an adjunct faculty at FIT, and my, my email address is on our presentation. I just want to quickly thank Aaron Maney and Deborah Spiro for providing awesome support. Yes, yeah, so I'm an adjunct faculty at, um, in uh, FIT in, under the uh, Textile and Development Marketing Program. I teach two classes. Uh, for incoming freshmen, and my class is uh, a lecture-based course that teaches textiles to fashion business majors as well as textile and fashion design major. It is a class that re uses this two textbook, and it's very much a hands-on class. And through the semester, I do three tests as well as we have lab demonstration. So in the face-to-face -face class, uh, I usually do the normal that we're all familiar with. I would do my tests in class. I give them a paper test, it's all timed. And the sample test is very much uh, like the uh, exams. And the students are not able to bring home the test, but we once the sample test is administered and we are finished, we all get an opportunity to work on it and review them together. Um, most students will always ask for a continuing uh, review, so I will also post them on Blackboard. Uh, at some occasions, I did uh, Kahoot during class time, and I'm able to group them uh, together and create a competition in the classroom. However, when the pandemic hit, I started to stress. I got really nervous. I panicked. And my biggest question, because the class is such a hands-on, is how do I really teach this course in a remote setting? And how am I going to get the class to engage and get to know one another? So um, FIT has been so wonderful to teachers like myself who does um, face-to-face -face teaching, and they, uh, in order for us to pivot to remote teaching, they gave us a lot of training and opportunity to use uh, the remote uh, platform. So my vision for creating this uh, uh, course online is how do I you know, create a fun atmosphere, being such a technical class, being such a hand, hands-on, how do I continue the engagement and participation of all my students, uh, in, allow them to study, to retain uh, the technical information that they are uh, studying, as well as how can we create an atmosphere of community and interact with one another. So with the remote, uh, the, the training during the semesters, and um, I had the opportunity to uh, get to team up with Jose. I'm very thankful for the faculty workshops, someone who have no clue about technology, had an opportunity to work with Jose, who has really created an exciting space for the class. Um, my my uh, tests have all, I've always have a lot of sample questions, um, but now how do I deliver this in an online setting? So Jose, do you wanna? Yeah, so um, these were the three main important things that we were focusing on when we uh, came together and began to brainstorm for ideas on how to de design and develop uh, these games. Um, like Professor Wong just mentioned, she had to uh, curate uh, questions for the midterm review and for the final review. And so we pulled uh, questions 
uh, together to, to have these uh, uh, sample review questions that we would then use in the game. Uh, the second thing that we then focused on was the story. We needed a good storyline. Uh, we wanted something that connected with students. We knew right away how important the story needed to be because if the students didn't connect to that story, we knew that um, they wouldn't buy in and they, it, it wouldn't be as fun uh, if the story didn't make sense to them. So we spent a lot of time uh, thinking of what story should we tell with this game. And the story also has to connect to the subject matter. It just can be any random story. So we really needed to talk about swatches here. Uh, and that's really what Professor Wong teaches. Uh, and so um, we came with we came up with several ideas. We you know we had to scratch some. We had to come back to the drawing board. So it was definitely a long process, and coming up with a good storyline. Well, see, I just wanted to mention because mm -hmm. I have no idea about gaming, and you know I basically throw you questions and pictures because this is what my space is all about. But I didn't know how to tell the story until you mentioned to me about an escape room. I didn't even think that was a reality because you told me that there are actually live escape room in the city. So I, I think I got very excited when you mentioned this, but it was not as easy to come up with the storyline. And I think that's where you really created this whole thing and put them all together. Yeah, that's true. And it's funny because as we were coming up with the story, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about later when we, when we get to the game, uh, the story eventually took us to a place where Professor Wong previously worked at, and we'll get to that in, in a moment later, which I thought was really funny for us. Um, and then thirdly, uh, we need to get assets, right? We need to have the images. Uh, we uh, One of the games that we created uh, is on Lady Gaga, and she's uh, it's, it's titled Lady Gaga's World Tour. And so we needed images from the swatches. We needed images from the garments. Uh, we needed uh, to collect sound effects. For example, when a student got a question wrong, you wanted to have like a, a sound that, you know, it's, it's fun, but it doesn't like, it spells defeat for them. It's like a fun sound, even though you get the question wrong, you can always click back and try again. So it was very important for us that the game had re real world applications. So that was our top on our goals, was that create a game that once they, once they're done with the game, that they actually learned uh, what uh, and, pre and were better prepared to take the midterm and the final. And so, one of the so the two games that we developed, uh, one of which we titled the FIT Swatch Caper, a virtual escape room. And again, like Professor Wong just mentioned, you know, we were hit with the pandemic and. You know, in, in a different situation, we might have taken the kids to an actual escape room because at FIT, we're right in the middle of Manhattan. And it's like there's escape rooms all, all around. Um, and, and if a funny note, like Professor Men, uh, Professor Wong mentioned, she didn't know what a, a, an escape room was. And so um, in this case, we were doing one in virtual because of, you know, COVID-19. We couldn't, you know, we were all working remotely. Um, and so the second game that we designed is titled Lady Gaga World Tour. And so let me just give you a quick uh, brief tour of the FIT Swatch Caper. Um, and so what we did was we broke up the, the teams into groups and we were using, uh, we used Blackboard uh, at FIT, um, but um, uh, for the live sessions, we uh, Professor Wang used a combination of Zoom as well as uh, Blackboard uh, Collaborate. And so what we did was we broke them into groups and uh, we did a breakout session. And, when, and so then what we did was we put the link into the group and the students click on the link and it takes them here. And as you can tell, as you can see, this is actually a Google form Right, and as you can see, this is actual Google, uh, an actual Google form, and so the students are welcome with a uh, Bitmoji of Professor Wong, 
and welcoming welcoming them, them into the the game. And so they will click next. And so here here is the introduction to the game and a little bit of a storyline. So a, a thief has stolen six swatches from FIT and has hidden each swatch in six different rooms. Your job is to find all six swatches and identify the thief at the end. To gain access to each room, you will have to answer a question correctly. Keep in mind that there are clues in each room that will help you identify who the thief is. Be mindful of the time because the clock is ticking and you want to be the first to catch the thief. Good luck. And so, um, again, this is happening in a breakout session. And the students, uh, what we uh, instructed them is to, if there, uh, if there was four people in a team, one person in that team shares the screen. And, and then they share the screen with the other three members of the team so that uh, they all don't have to go individually in their own separate ways. Again, it's a team effort. And we want them to work together as a team. Uh, and we want them to talk about uh, solving the, the riddles and also answering the questions together as a team. And that's where the social learning happens. That's where the students are talking about uh, figuring out the answers together as a team. And so when they click on the next button, now uh, uh, it takes them, now this is another Google form, right? And here's the first question. What weave consists of long floats? And then what we did was we took images of, 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 of these swatches and then we put them uh, in the Google form. And originally we had this as a fill-in question and we realized that it was difficult for students to enter correctly the correct answer. And so we switched it to a multiple choice question and we found that that worked better for students uh, because you know sometimes they will capitalize a word and Google form would mark it wrong when they, you know they had the correct answer. So then we switched this to multiple choice. So if I were to choose the wrong answer and, and let's say for example, I go with plain weave and then I would click next then you know I get a sound effect and it's just you know the answer is wrong. Try again, and so I press back to try again, and then they will get another try. And so the team will work together, and and they would try to figure out the answer uh, together as a group. If I were to choose the correct answer, in this case is satin weave. Uh, am I correct, Professor Wong? Yes, yes. Satin weave, right? And by the way, I learned so much about swatches uh, building these games with Professor Wong. She is such an amazing professor. Thank you. And so let's go ahead and click Satin Weave. And if I click Next, it says, correct, you have gained access to room number one. Now you have to search for the Satin Swatch. Click on the link below. And so the link to the, to the room, to the, to the escape room, is now uh, here. But it gives you a, a picture of what a Satin Swatch looks like. Because now we want the students to familiarize themselves with the swatches. I, they, they, they need to know what a satin swatch looks like. And so if I click on the link, it now takes me to the first escape room. And this is actually built using Google Slides, right? So we took images, and this is what I meant earlier about collecting assets. We took images and uh, PNG images that are uh, uh, easily to, um, populated in the room. And so we took a picture of a cat, a medieval statue, a mouse, binoculars. And if you click on some of these, uh, some of these are clickable. As you can see, if I hover over them, they're clickable. And so if I click on the magnifying glass, I get a clue as to who is the thief, right? So it says you use your magnifying glass to get a closer look at some words that have been carved on the bookshelf you can make sense of the following letters. And so, as you can see, you know, this is a clue as to who is the thief. And so the student would then have to cl close this tab and they're back into the room. But now they also, as they're looking for clues, you gotta remember, you're also looking for the swatch, right? And so we made it something like a game like Find Waldo. And then if you look closely, the swatch is over here, right? The satin so uh, silk swatch. So if I click on it, 
Now it will take me to the next question. So if I get this question correct, and Professor Wong, I, I'm, I think the answer is filament? Yes. Right, so what yarn is satin weave made of? And if I choose filament, and again, this is a Google form, if I click next, now I am presented with the next swatch, which is a single jersey swatch. And so now we moved on from the silk satin swatch to now single jersey swatch. And that's basically the, the virtual escape room. And as they get through six rooms, answering the questions correctly, looking at clues and riddles. And then at, at the end, they're asked, who is the thief? And then they, they get uh, the answer correct. They actually win the game. And this is all being timed. And then I get the report from the Google Forms at the end, where then I can look at all the data. And real quickly, I want to show you uh, the second game. And let me just close these tabs. And by the way, if you have any questions, please feel free to post your questions in the discussion forum, and we'll answer your questions at the end. And also, uh, Aaron has posted the link to the slides. Uh, please feel free to follow along, or just make, if you want to own the slides, uh, feel, feel free to use them. And so the second game that we made it's, we titled the Lady Gaga World Tour. And as you know, we are a fashion school and Lady Gaga is, is, is a, you know, a fashion, uh, a trendsetter in the fashion industry. Not only that, her music is very popular with the students uh, in, around that age group that are taking this class. So we really wanted to connect with the students. Um, uh, and, and, and Professor Wong, uh, as, as you know, when we were, playing this game a lot. You had a lot of fans in your classroom who were uh, uh, big fans of Lady Gaga. Uh, so it was fun to see them uh, talk about how much they love her and, and, and they love her music. Yes. So I'm going to quickly show you how the Lady Gaga World Tour game is. And again, the story was very important. So in this case, uh, Lady Gaga is going on tour next year and she is looking to hire a team of fashion stylists. You will have to answer a series of questions, and if you answer correctly, you will earn the garment. The team who collects all six garments and has the highest score wins the job. So it's a similar scenario. The students are broken up into groups and uh, either collaborate, we do a breakout session. And, and so from there, the students are competing for this position uh, uh, um, for, for Lady Gaga's, um, uh, to be hired by Lady Gaga's a fashion stylist. And so every time they answer a question correctly, then the student uh, earns that garment and they add another collection to, they add another collection to their, the wardrobe. And once they have those six garments in the wardrobe, then Lady Gaga picks you for that position. So once they click next, uh, we, you are welcomed by a, a Bitmoji from Professor Wong. You enter your team name, and then you click next. And here's the first question. So uh, there's a series of five questions uh, regarding the silk satin. And so if I were to answer the uh, a question incorrectly, for example, if I were to click wash Lady Gaga's meat dress, then you get a very upset Lady Gaga looking at you angrily. You know, the answer is incorrect. Lady Gaga is not happy with your performance. Click on the back button to try again. So if I click back, and if I click on the correct answer, Professor Wang, I need your help on this one because I don't remember the answer to this one. The second one, the weaving. Yeah. Right, so if I click on the weaving, and by the way, we, we also randomize these questions so that the students, uh, the, the answers move around. Uh, so there's about five questions here. And so this next question is method of coloring involving adding colored pigments to spinning solution before extrusion from a spinneret. The last answer. Solution dyeing, right? Mm -hmm. So, and again, these questions are all connected to the swatch that we're covering, in this case, the silk satin swatch. And the third question, method of dyeing to produce different colors on a fabric containing two of uh, two more classes of fiber. Second. Across dyeing. OK. 
Okay, method of producing one solid color on a fabric containing two or more classes of fiber. The last one. Union dyeing. And the last question, process of dyeing before the fabric has been woven or knitted into fabrics. Last one, yarn yeah. dyeing. And once they've got all those answers correctly, now they're rewarded with, with then a silk Lady Gaga silk satin outfit. Right, so now they have one garment in the wardrobe. And once they get those six garments, then that team is then rewarded uh, and given the position as a Lady Gaga's uh, fashion stylist. And that's basically how the game goes on. And so let me just go back to our presentation. I just wanted to say, Jose, that I, I know that when we were going into the breakout room and, and just for the audience, you know, I also invited Jose in the class, which has really made it exciting because I don't think as a professor I could do navigating of the technology, visiting the students in the breakout room. So it was really great to see Jose delivered this in class with me. And I noticed that get the incorrect answer because they were so uh, wanting to see every bit of asset that was embedded in this uh, escape rooms and tests. So that was fun to see. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And, I, and from a learning designer's perspective, I rarely get to interact with the students. And I thank Professor Wan for allowing me into her classroom just to see the end results. Um, real quickly, I just do want to mention that these games were built using Google Forms and Google Slides. We, there was no coding or anything really technical. Um, they, we just used Google Slides and, and Google Forms. Um, some of the feedback that we got from students, uh, by the way, we also noticed that the students turn on their webcams, which was something I've noticed with faculty were struggling during the pandemic or during the remote teaching. We noticed that when students went into the their own groups, into the breakout sessions, most of the students had turned on their webcams on. So I thought that was uh, uh, interesting. Uh, here are some comments or feedback from students. The games helped me remember the material. I felt less anxiety and better prepared to take the test. It was fun learning from each other in groups. Here is a quick video that Professor Wong was uh, actually recorded the, uh, the, the session while the students were taking the game. I just want to quickly show you what this particular student said. Um, I prefer this a lot more than Kahoo because I feel like this is really fun, you know, like not only do you escape the room, but also like you work with your teammate, you know, and I think that's something that is very rare, especially during this time. So it was a very special moment. So yeah, it was, it was interesting to hear that the students' uh, response on, on how it was special for her. It was a special moment. Professor Wan, you want to say something a little bit about that? Oh, yeah. I, I believe that you know uh, the students, I ever since I delivered this games, and they were always looking forward to the next review because they're enjoying the game. And I cre created really a community. And uh, even within the, the students themselves, they got to know each other because this particular semester, the students never got the chance to be in the physical space at FIT. So this was really a fun class because, you know, they're avid designers and they love Lady Gaga. And I just saw such interest in really learning by having this game. So. Here's one uh, another quick short clip, and this one is actually a, a team playing the game in action. And this team is in the room right now, one of the escape rooms, and they're looking for a swatch. You're looking for a plane weave. Oh, it's on the wall. Oh, yeah. If that was obvious, I could even find it. <laughs> <laughs> What are the versions you already? I think it's all, all of the above, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yay! 
And so what, what we found interesting was that the students were working together and it wasn't just one student clicking away all the answers. If you notice, the students would stop and they would ask each other, is this, does this sound right? And so that was really the goal is have them work together, collaborate, create camaraderie, especially during the time where they were all in our own worlds. We're all separate. You know, we're at home. We're not there in front of each other, being able to interact with each other. And that was really an exciting find that we got. Um, Professor Wong also, uh, she had a, the genius idea, ingenious idea of creating a healthy um, amount of competition uh, so that uh, every, everyone was a winner. And she awarded everyone who participated in the game with points for the class. So I thought that was genius because it created some healthy competition. Um, and so. I'm excited for this a lot more than we. Well, let me move to the next slide. And Professor Wong, uh, uh, I just want to add one other thing is that you created such a safe place for students. As you can see their faces here, they surprised you. You want to go ahead and tell a little bit of what the students did for you at the end of the semester? Oh, yeah, because, you know, we use Blackboard Collaborate and I would only use Zoom when we have speakers. So for whatever reason, the student asked me to do Zoom on the last day. I had no idea, but I said, sure, why not? And it was so sweet. They just sent me this. Um, and kind of did this during class and this is the last day of the semester and they wanted to thank and especially highlighted all the work that was put in and having those fun games they said that it's so memorable and that they really like being together in the community and was sad that the semester was ending so that was really exciting it was really touching for me so sweet yeah I just want to add one quick note that, you know, when I joined and when Professor Wong invited me into her classroom, I was just overwhelmed because of just how how warm uh, she is to her, her students. She's very passionate about the subject matter. And just the reaction that she got, the response that she got back from her students was equal. Right. So it was like a, it, it was it was it was a, definitely a safe place where students felt uh, free to speak their mind. And they're all, it was everyone participating. It wasn't just a few more people that always participate in the classroom. Oh, perfect. Um, I just wanna end with this one last slide. Uh, if, if there are, is anyone interested? We, uh, we do have gamification workshops. It's on the, the link is on the slide. So if you click on the slide, you will have access to that link. Also feel free to have uh, gain, um, if you're interested in the slides, please feel free. You can go ahead and have them if you want. And lastly, I just want to mention Jane McGonigal. She's a, uh, she has a great book out there. It's called Reality is Broken. It's based on gamification. If you want to learn more about gamifying uh, gamification, the book is not just based on education, it's gamification in general. So if you're interested more about gamifying your course, grab her book. She also has a great TED Talk on YouTube. And so we're going to open up for questions. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, wow. Oh, that's a great question because I thought about that and the idea, you know, Professor Wong's vision was specific. Uh, everything we built was from, was from scratch. We didn't buy any uh, any assets or we didn't buy a pre-made escape room. This was all built on, based off the brainstorming sessions that, and, 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 Pro and Professor Wong's vision of what she wanted. So this is very specific. And so we weren't able to purchase any pre-made uh, escape room. I think just to add to Jose, you know, I, if, as soon as I delivered to Jose my vision, it was so easy for him to just kind of put it together. I mean, the I was overwhelmed because I'm not an expert in those Google Slide and Google Docs, but as I go on training and uh, I, um, Jose and I spend a lot of time every week. I come and make sure that there's engagement in the class because that's, that he knows that that's my goal. 
And he just kind of helped me. And I think this is through our working together that we just created it. So the synergy made it happen without purchasing anything. Yeah, yeah. I, I see a really good question there. Uh, is that okay? I could jump to the, uh, Ashley asked a question there about, is it possible to be able to copy this to edit and create a different version? I would love to use this as a jumping jumping off step, but it looks like it would only have view access. Definitely. Yeah, feel free to take it. Up, uh, send us an email and I can send you the, the files. 